have much to do. And the only thing I need is to speak English. I can do that. So I took this training and I started as a student training to be a teacher. And I loved it. I realized that was something I really wanted to do. And I started teaching adults. It was very, very challenging because I was 18 and my students were 40 or 35 or 50 years old. So it was super challenging because they would see me walk in the classroom and they would say, wow, she's super young. And yes, I was. Um, but the only reason why I ended up in this career path and doing the thing I love the most is because I speak English. So I wanted to share a little bit about that with you guys as well, because you have no idea where another language might take you. And as you saw in, in, in my resume, I, I keep studying. I love studying. I think that we never should learn. We never should stop learning. And being a teacher, it's important to remember what it feels like to be a student. So I worked as a language teacher. Um, then I thought, huh, what else can I do? So I started supervising and coordinating language programs. And then I thought, oh, okay, this is interesting and nice. And now what can I do? So I started um, creating programs and managing programs for English language speakers. Then I thought, mm, okay, this is fun. What, what else can I do? And I started working with curricular design and then I thought, hmm. so I became a teacher because I thought that I could change the world one student at a time, showing them how important English had been for me and how important English can be for people that are learning another language and potentially could change their life and give them a career opportunity some similar to what it gave me. And um, then I thought, Okay, so if I train teachers, I can change the world one teacher at a time. So I started teacher training maybe like 15 years ago, and I've teacher trained in the United States. I've teacher trained in Mexico and Central America. And right now, I'm currently working in a teacher training for Indonesian teachers. That's how I met teacher Henry. <laughs> so you never know where language is going to take you. You never know where English is going to take you. And you never know what you are learning now, the difference it can make in your life and the things that you can accomplish and the things that you can do with something that you just do as everyday, as an everyday activity, maybe in class or maybe in school. And then after teacher training, I became an academic director for several different institutions. And it has been a wild, interesting, passionate, incredible ride. So I wanted to share a little bit about that with you because I know how inspiring it is to hear somebody say, this changed my life. And I think if you think of English as a tool to connect with the world, to connect with other countries, to connect with other people, and you find it relevant and you find that there is a purpose why you are learning English, it might change your perspective about how to practice English, when to speak English, how much time you should speak English, et cetera, et cetera. So thank you for allowing me to share a little bit about myself and a little bit about how English has changed and transformed my life. And now we're going to talk about um, tips on how to improve your English language skills. So I uh, did a little research and I thought about 20 things that you can do that are very, very simple, that you can apply in your everyday life, that you can do by yourself, that you can find a friend or a buddy to work with and to practice your English. Because I know it could be a little bit, hmm, you don't want to participate, you're afraid of making a mistake, you don't want to come to the front. And once you do it on your own and you start practicing by yourself and you become a little bit more confident, maybe you'll feel a little bit more enticed to raise your hand or to come to the front or to practice an activity, um, not only with your teacher, but maybe with a foreigner or a tourist or somebody outside your school that speaks English. 
So we're going to go into the presentation now. And like I said before, and like he, the teacher Henry had told you, we are going to talk about tips for improving English speaking skills. So I narrowed it down. There's many different things that I could talk about, <laughs> but I narrowed it down to 20 things that we can do. And these are going to be very simple things and tips that you can implement every day. So the first ones that I want to talk to you about. Um, the first one, usually people ask me, so what can I do to improve my, my English? How do I practice? What do I do? And I usually tell them, find something that you like. So if you like movies, if you like video games, if you like music, if you like, um, I don't know, social media, if you like cooking, if you like uh, racing cars, <laughs> something that you're passionate about, something that you like, something that is interesting for you, find that topic. And my, oh, first, advice is, my first advice is read aloud. <laughs> I know it might sound very simple, but experts say that we can produce what we can understand, what we can listen, and what we can understand with our mind. So if you read something in English that is interesting to you, then your brain will start absorbing that information and it will lead you to learn things about something that you're passionate about or something that attracts you or that you like. And it will start collecting vocabulary. It will start collecting structure. It will start collecting grammar. This is not a, well, it depends on your learning style. Because some people are very good at identifying, for example, grammar or vocabulary or things. But it's mostly um, something that happens in the brain while you. Sorry. Finding a topic that is interesting for you, finding a topic that entices you or something that really attracts your attention can help you to expand your vocabulary and also expand your grammar system. Then the second tip that I thought about that could be helpful for you guys is, and this is super simple, like super, super simple. You're going to see, uh, you're going to think, uh, how is she saying this? But it's true. You can talk to yourself. <laughs> you can make a list of things. You can name objects. You can remind yourself of things to do. Um, I don't know if you do this in your native language, but I normally talk to myself and I'm like, okay, don't forget to take lunch. I need to feed the dogs. I need to do this before I leave my house. So I usually say it out loud, but I want to dare you. And I want to give you this, this tip so that in the future, when you start thinking about your list of things you want to do, you start thinking about these things in English and you start saying them in English. I had a couple of years ago, I had a student that said, every time I go to the supermarket or to the market, I start saying vocabulary in English. So he would walk down, for example, in the fruit alley and say, apple, pineapple, watermelon, cucumber, you know, like just vocabulary words in English to keep your mind thinking in English. And that's very helpful and very useful as well. So when you start thinking about practicing your English, start thinking about talking to yourself in English. And at, at the beginning, it might be funny or weird, but I promise you, the brain and, and like speaking a language is like exercising. The more you practice, the more you exercise, the stronger you become. So I usually say, for example, if you go to the gym and... If you go to the gym and you try to lift 100 pounds, it's going to be very difficult to do, right? But if you try to um, lift five pounds, it might be very easy to do, right? 
So the same thing with learning a language. You start with vocabulary, you start with a couple of phrases, and then the more you practice, the stronger you become, the more you can speak, and the more fluent you can become. So that is the second tip. And you have to tell me later, Teacher Henry, if your students are trying this. <laughs> Thank you for the you can assign it for homework and see if you can find them like out in the street saying names in English for things. Nice to try. <laughs> All right, my third tip, which is something that really helps with, for example, pronunciation, or um, it really helps for you to know what it what you sound like in another language is record yourself. So we all have cell phones now and we all have some sort of smart device and you can go ahead and record voice notes. Um, you can do this outside the class as well, not only in class, but outside the class with your classmates. Find a buddy, find a friend that you can send voice notes to in English. Um, you can log into dictionaries, for example, if there's a word you don't know how to pronounce and practice the pronunciation on that word. Record yourself and listen to it or record your voice and check with a native speaker as well if it sounds the way it's supposed to sound. And then the other tip that I have for you is listen and repeat. So I, throughout the years, I have met lots of people that speak very fluent English. And normally you think, ah, oh, they went to school or they have been practicing English for a long time, like you guys. But I have asked a lot of people and I have said like, what, what school did you go to? What university did you go to? And they're like, no, I learned English with video games. No, I learned English by singing. I learned English with watching TV. So that is also something that we always recommend. If you guys have cable or if you guys have Netflix or if you guys have some sort of app where you can listen to series or you can watch, um, yeah, watch TV in English, watch short videos. Now there's so many different things like TikTok and Facebook, Instagram and all these videos we can watch all the time and they're short. So you can listen to them. And I would also encourage you to make your own. Make your own videos, make your own series, make your own stories in English in, and record them or, or share them, not only with your friends, but you can share them with the world as well. Now that's becoming a little bit more of a fashion, right? We can share information about things that we like or things that we're passionate about. So for example, if you like music and you want to share information about music, you can go ahead and listen to a song, repeat the lyrics of the song, sing the song, share a video with the song, share a story about the song, etc. So the more you listen, the more you can produce. Again, experts say that you can only produce what you can understand when you listen. So listening is also a very good tip. You, you don't only have to listen to your teacher, you can listen to other things as well. Not only inside the classroom, but outside the classroom. I also would like to tell you to challenge yourself because you have been very blessed and you have the opportunity to learn English and to speak English. So you don't know where English is going to take you. It might be when I started teaching, um, people said English is the language of the future. And I think English is the language of now. It's not the language of the future anymore. It's just the language of now. If we speak English, we have better opportunities to communicate with other people in the world. We have better opportunities to share what we know or to learn things that we are interested in. So, and it, and it comes from doing things like these that are very, very simple like reading out loud or talking to yourself, recording yourself, listening and repeating, right? So let's go to the next four. The next four are also um, some things that you can practice on your own. So the first thing is think in English. 
So I know your, your, your brain thinks in bahasa, right? So if you're walking around, if you're communicating with your peers, you're thinking in bahasa. But again, find something that is interesting for you and try to think in English. So if I wanted to ask a question, what would I say? If I wanted to start a conversation, what would I say? If I wanted to invite this person to do something, what would I say? So you can think about different scenarios and find that topic or find that scenario and think in English. What vocabulary would you use? What phrases would you use? What are the things that you have learned in your classes that you would implement in these different scenarios as well? Then um, speak slower. <laughs> so normally when we're speaking in our native language, we're like, <laughs> right? <laughs> but when we're learning another language or when we want to communicate in another language, um, one of the tips that experts give is to speak a little bit slower, to practice your vocabulary, to practice your pronunciation, to practice your enunciation, how you say things, your inflections, if you go up, for example, if it's a question, if you go down, for example, if it's an answer, um, how do we, for example, put words together instead of saying, what is your name? We say, what's your name? You know, so sometimes we compress some things. And once you start to speak a little bit slower, or once you start thinking about how you're speaking in English, you can start thinking about these inflections that we do in the language. So things that we can say to sound a little bit more native, or to sound a little bit more accurate. Um, one of the things I want to share also is when I started teaching, there was a lot of emphasis on having like perfect American pronunciation. But thank God, now that is not necessary. Now we have global English. So I think one of the beauties about speaking English is that there's Latin English and Indonesian English and Egyptian English and I don't know, Korean English. You can pretty much think of all the different pronunciations that we have. And that makes English rich as well. It's all about communication. So the more you speak, the more you practice your speaking, the better you will become at being understood. So it's more about communication, right? We want to make sure that we're accurate, but we also want to make sure that we are fluent. So that takes me to the next point, which is telling stories. We all love to tell stories. We all love to tell stories about ourselves or about our friends or about our family, or maybe you have a pet. So I would recommend find one person or two people to talk to record yourself, send them messages, um, tell each other a story once a week, for example, in English and share it with this friend. Um, I don't know how many of you have thought about the possibility of applying for a scholarship or about the possibility of studying abroad or about the possibility of, I don't know, pursuing a career that requires English. So one of the things we can do is start telling stories about what we see ourselves doing in the future. So you can say, well, I'm going to use my example. So I was telling you that I, I wanted to become a teacher because I wanted to change the world one student at a time, showing them that English was important and English changed my life. So I started telling students that I was invited to talk to these stories about how this changed my life, about how I had a job, how I was very passionate about my job, how I was very passionate about the things that I was doing. So I normally would record myself. I would listen to myself and say, okay, this sounds right. Ah, this is not 
very well pronounced. Let me look at the dictionary and see how you pronounce this word. Let me pronounce it again. Let me say it again. And I would share my stories with my friends. And then my friends would share their feedback with me. So I think this is a very useful tip of something you can do as well. Um, and the last one that I have here is using technology. So now everything is so near to us. Before we had to go to a library, get an encyclopedia, look for information. Now everything is at our fingertips. We can find information in our phone. We can find information in apps. We can find it in games or in series or in social networking. So again, I would urge you to, if you have a smartphone, for example, the first thing I would do is put my phone in English so that the settings are in English. The information that you have there or the instruction or how to follow steps to download something, if you put them in English, then your brain starts to think in English, use English and understand it a little better. So my recommendation would be put the settings of your phone, put the settings of your computer, put the settings of any technological device that you use in English so that your brain gets used to following instructions or reading things in English, right? I know it's a little bit easier to have it in our native language, but I do that all the time. Like all of my devices are in English and people always ask me, like, why, is, why do you keep your devices in English? And I always say, because if I don't practice, even though I've been speaking English all my life, I'm going to forget. What we don't practice, we forget, right? So again, it's like that example of the gym. If you don't lift weights regularly, you can't go next month to the gym and try to lift something very heavy, right? You have to constantly practice to be able to lift something heavy. So again, if you have technological devices, set them up so that you can use them in English. And that is going to help as well because something happens in the brain where your brain is thinking in the other language. And then it just becomes a habit or something that you are used to doing. Now we go to the next one. Do we have, um, can, can people ask questions like in the middle, Henry, or should I just go and yes, we do questions? Yes, absolutely and answer? can. It's okay, take your time. <laughs> okay, so I don't, I don't know if I want to pause here a little bit in case somebody has a question or a comment or something they want to know, if that's okay. Or we yes, can absolutely. leave it. Okay. So so anybody has a question or a um, comment and the they want to raise here? We see that maybe someone have a question. So maybe you can open your camera, open your mic, and you can also ask questions in the comment section. Ah, yes, perfect. You can raise your hands too if you want to ask questions to Miss Paula here. I see a lot of smiling faces, which is a good, it's a good thermometer. It's going well. <laughs> okay, does anyone has a question? Hello. Uh, is very interesting. Okay, so there is one. Okay, okay, okay. Is it the all Zoom? Uh, good morning, Miss Bola. Fabian. Uh, I like to ask, uh, how can we improve our accent in English? Because for some people to uh, use English as a second language, it's really hard to mm. to uh, use an accent in English, an American mm -hmm. or British English. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's a very good question. So one of the things that I would suggest is something very, very simple. The more you listen to the language, the more your brain connects to the language and the more um, your brain starts to identify the real sounds or what a word should sound like. So again, if you want to sound more American or if you want to sound more British, 
I would say find something that you like, like television, music, or um, podcasts, or stories, or anything that has to do with, with you listening to the language. And the more you listen, the more your brain absorbs. It's kind of like when you're a baby. Um, if your mother is preparing a bottle for you, you don't, you don't really know if your mother explains it, like, I'm going to prepare a bottle. I'm going to put some milk on it. And then you're going to drink it. And it's going to be delicious. Maybe you only understand the word bottle. And then you're like, oh, yes, I want my bottle, right? So when we start learning a language, we start identifying words or we start identifying cues or we start identifying sounds. And that, again, is something that can motivate us, but also is something that happens in our brain. The more we are exposed to the language, the more we listen to something, the more our brain starts to understand it and produce it. When we understand what someone is saying, we are able to produce it ourselves. Thank you, Ms. Paula. You're welcome. And thank you for the questions and thank you for your answer, Ms. Paula. Does anyone have a questions again? Excuse me, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, so, as I know, there is like uh, two accents. Uh, no, uh, the popular one, the popular ones are maybe two accents that I know of, like Brit British accent and English accent. So, like, uh, is it possible to, for one person to learn about two accents or maybe more? And if so, is it not, like, uh, confusing to use them? Okay, that's a very good question. So, you can actually learn many different accents, just like how we can learn different languages. So, I... I've been very blessed as well. And I've had the opportunity to work with little kids that are maybe three, four year olds and they speak five or six languages. So some people say, wow, you know, don't speak English to them because they already speak German or Italian or French. And if you speak English, it's going to confuse them. But there's something that happens in the brain that uh, it's like it saves the information in compartments. And for example, a child whose mother is Italian speaks Italian with his mother, but maybe the father is French. He, the baby speaks French to his father because the brain understands that mama speaks Italian, dada speaks French. And then they go to school and they learn English. So they speak English with a teacher. So just like we learn languages, we can learn accents as well. So this is what actors do. For example, they learn American English or they learn British English or Irish English or um, Indian English, right? Like different accents, different ways of speaking and saying different things. So again, it's about listening. So if you want to learn, for example, a British accent, you would have to listen a lot to people speaking with a British accent. If you want to speak and want to be able to produce sounds with American accents, you would have to listen to native speakers or to, for example, TV or music in that particular accent that you want to, to emulate or to practice. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Uh, uh, excuse me. <laughs> I I have any question. Uh, are you Ameri American people? Oh, well, I actually was born in the continent of America, but I am not North American. I am from Central America. So I was born in a country named El Salvador, but I went to, my school was American and my family lived in the United States for a long time. So at home, we spoke both Spanish and English. So I learned English and Spanish as my mother tongues. That is actually a really great question. So does anyone <laughs> has a question? Any more questions? Um, 
Uh, yeah. Okay. So good morning, Miss Paula and all. Uh, my question is quite related to uh the previous question about accent. So some people think that speaking with an English accent is important, but uh this perspective makes some of us who still have trouble with speaking English become afraid of sounding bad or confusing to other people that we're talking with. So uh, therefore, in this case, I would like to know Miss Paula's opinion as a native speaker. Uh, is a good English accent important and we must have it when we're speaking English or is it just a nice touch? Thank you. That's an excellent question. So remember I was telling you a little bit about when I started teaching, everything was like, American pronunciation and you had to sound like an American and we had to repeat a lot and um, actually we had a, a teaching way where we would say a word and then we would say okay everybody repeat with me repeat it again say it another time and we did a lot of oral repetition because we wanted to make sure that people had perfect pronunciation but thankfully now that we have global English I think one of the richness about global English is that everybody can have their own accent and speak English in a fluent way that is understandable. So I think the most important thing is to focus on fluency to communicate, fluency to be understandable, right? So you might have an accent, but um, that doesn't mean that people won't understand you, right? We listen to people speak English, for example, I don't know if you've heard a lot of Latin people speak English, they have a Latin accent. Or if you've uh, heard people from India, for example, they speak English as their native language, but they have an accent, right? And now it's a little bit more common for people to be proud of their own accent. And I think that is wonderful. I would never recommend for someone to, to try to, um, to become American because you're not. You were born in another country and that's beautiful. Your culture is amazing. The things that you can bring are amazing. So when people listen to a little accent, they can say, ah, you're not from here. Tell me about your culture. Tell me about your country. Tell me about your family. Tell me about the things you eat. And I think... Diversity makes the world wonderful. So to answer your question, I think the most important thing is um, communication fluency. So it doesn't really matter if you have an accent or a little accent. If people can understand you, that's fine. Okay, that's a very good answer from Ms. Paula. Thank you, Ms. Paula, for answering that. Um, is there anyone who wants to ask any more questions? I want. So, like, because English is not my mother's tongue, it's so hard to start. And I'm afraid that people would not understand what I'm saying or do my grammar right and etc. So, I want to ask, like, how to build up that confidence in mind? Because mm -hmm. I want to speak English, but I'm afraid that they will not understand or I miscommunicate with them. So, like, what do you mm -hmm. think about that? Thank you. Thank you for your answer, for your question, Keisha. So I'm going, to, I'm going to turn it around a little and I'm going to have you think of a person that is visiting Indonesia and they don't speak Bahasa, but they can speak a couple of words here and there. If you are there and they, for example, ask you a question that is not completely accurate in Bahasa, but you understand, would you help them to find an address or would you help them to go to the hospital or would you help them to buy something, for example? How would you feel if somebody were trying to speak Bahasa? Surely we are very proud of, very proud of them when we, they try to use our, our language. Mm -hmm. Then yes. Of course we, so we it's can help them. Exactly. So it's exactly the same when it happens the other way around. Let's say that you are visiting America and you have a little bit of an accent. 
but you are trying to communicate, people will love that you speak English to them. They will feel very comfortable with trying to help you because in real life, we never think like, oh, we, he made a mistake in grammar. Ah, no, you don't ask that way. In real life, when you have a conversation with a person and you're trying to help the person, even if they can't communicate very well, you try to help them as much as possible. And for example, like in, in my case, I have traveled to different countries and sometimes I, I try to express myself with mimics because I'm a teacher. So with mimics, or I try to use very basic vocabulary. And then people ask me, do you speak English? I'm like, oh, yes, thank God I speak English. Do you speak English? And then you found a friend for life. Somebody that speaks a language that you understand will be your family from that moment on if you are traveling the world. So normally, when we think about speaking English to somebody who's a native speaker or thinking about a tourist, for example, we're like, oh, no, what do I say? But if you think of the perspective of the other person, imagine there's an American person visiting a, a beautiful part of Indonesia and they have nobody to talk to because they don't speak Bahasa. And you come and you say, hi, how are you? I can see that you are not from here. He will be or she will be like, oh, somebody that speaks English, yes. He will not, he or she will not focus on your grammar or on your pronunciation or on your vocabulary. He or she will be thinking, ah, thank God, there's another person that speaks my language. So I think that helps also to become a little bit more confident when you not think about you, but think about the other person. All right, that is a wonderful answer and wonderful questions. Okay, so does anyone has any more questions? Yes. I have a question, is Paula. Uh, my name is Paulina. Uh, I would like to ask you a question. Uh, is it all right if sometimes I accidentally mix between American and British accent? Yeah, if you if you cross over from American to British in while you're speaking yes uh, yeah okay yeah so that's fine so i think the only well there's there's a couple of differences between british um, english and american english like spelling pronunciation grammatical forms that they use in the uk that we don't use in america but as long as you get understood, as long as people understand what you're saying, I think that's the most important thing to keep in mind, right? It's all about communication. Okay, that's wonderful. Uh, is there anyone who wants to ask, ask more questions? Hi, hello. Hi, this is Paula. I want to ask about uh, the use of grammar since we're talking about how we speak in English. Well, many people doesn't really understand and doesn't really get how to use uh, grammar properly in their pronunciation or their speaking in English. So what do you think about improving that? Okay. So I think with learning grammar in any language, the most important thing is to learn it in context because it's similar to, for example, learning vocabulary versus speaking English. So traditionally, for example, people might say, oh, I know 25 vegetables in English, which is wonderful, but can you buy a vegetable in English? Can you sell a vegetable in English? Can you ask, what is this in English, etc." So normally we teach phrases, right? so that people can communicate with, uh, with phrases and not only the vocabulary. We don't go around that is, having oh, a slide. Oh, oh, oh. We don't go around having a conversation saying like pink, uh, blue, black, gray, mm, purple, right? I might know the words, but if I'm not using them in context, they don't make any sense. And it's the same with grammar. 
So when we're thinking about practicing grammar, instead of, for example, memorizing the rules or memorizing the exceptions or memorizing this goes first, then this, then that, then we need, of course, we need to know the structure, but it's more about using it in context. So when do I use the present simple? I use the present simple when I'm talking about habits. So I wake up in the morning, I brush my teeth every day, I eat my breakfast. So we learn the, glam the grammar by using it, not by memorizing the, the, um, the rules, let's say. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you for the question and thank you for your answer. Okay, so if anyone has any more questions, you can save them for later you can uh, save them at the end of the presentation. So Ms. Paula, you can continue your presentation. Okay, perfect. So um, thank you for the questions because actually some of the things you asked are part of these tips as well. So one of the things is, how do I speak English if I don't know what to do? Well, it's about practice. More you practice, the more you speak, the more naturally uh, fluency will come. So again, if you have learned English and you have memorized a lot of vocabulary or you have memorized a lot of rules, try to think of a context where you can use that vocabulary or try to think of a context where you can use that grammar or um, give it a real life application. So for example, one of the things that, that I work with uh, when training teachers is Think about a real life context where you can apply what you're doing in your class. So if today we are talking about, I don't know, a bank, for example, and withdrawing money, depositing money, opening an account, right? How will you use that outside the classroom? So thinking about structures, grammar, vocabulary, all the things that you would apply when visiting a bank. So, hi, good morning. My name is Paola. I want to open an account. Uh, or uh, thank you for your help. You have been very kind. You know, things like with more application. So practicing, 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 not necessarily only the vocabulary or only the structures, but thinking about a real life context where you could use it. And I think that makes it a little bit not only challenging, but also more interesting because you find a reason why you learn you are learning something. It's not just a grammar class, for example. It's when I visit America someday, <laughs> I will be able to order using plastic or paper, for example, if they ask me for what kind of bag I want, or a cash or credit you know, when I'm paying for something, right? So if we think of a real life application, it also becomes a little bit more motivating for us right, as a student. Then, um, well, I think I talked about this a little bit, but I think this is super important. We all love music. We all love different kinds of music. And fortunately, I think all the kinds of music that we like, we can find at least one or two or a couple of singers that sing this kind of music in English. So I would say find an artist that you like and sing along. <laughs> if you have friends uh, that like to speak English, have a karaoke night. Do karaoke in, in class. Do karaoke outside the class. Read, read the vocabulary of the songs. Because through songs, we can listen to like colloquialism, idiomatic expressions, things that are a little bit more... Um, real, right? Normally in songs, we listen to vocabulary or ways of speaking that we normally don't use accurately, for example, but it's the way that people speak. So it also gives you an idea between the difference of accurate English and spoken English. And throughout time also, for example, um, there are some expressions or some vocabulary that through time, because people use it so much, become accurate English. So the more you listen to songs, the more you listen to music, the more exposed you are to think of your brain as a gym. The more you exercise your brain, 
the stronger it becomes. So if you're constantly listening or inputting information to your brain in English, the more you will be able to produce. And all of a sudden you'll start saying things and you'll be like, what, what, how did I say that? Where did that come from? And it came from maybe a song that you heard or maybe a television show that you watched. So the more you can expose yourself to the language, the better. And number 11 goes to the questions that you were asking about building confidence. The only way we can build confidence is by practicing because it happened to me. When I started teaching, I didn't remember what it, well, yeah, I didn't remember what it was to learn another language because I learned Spanish and English at the same time. Everybody in my country speaks Spanish and everybody at my work spoke English, right? Because I was a language. So for me, I'm so sorry about my dogs. It's, it's, it's Easter here in El Salvador. So everybody's on vacation and people keep coming in and out. Sorry. Um, so for example, when I started teaching, I remember that I used to tell people like, come to the front, like volunteer, raise your hand, um, say the student A, student B, you know, like, don't be afraid. And then I thought, why is it so difficult for the students to do this? Nobody wanted to come to the front. Nobody raised their hand. Nobody had a question. So I thought, okay, I'm going to go to German classes. I enrolled myself in German, in the German school. Everybody spoke German, only German. And I remember when I started learning, oh my God, I got so nervous. I would sweat. My teacher would ask me a question and my brain would immediately go to English. And every time they asked me something, I would be like, I don't know. I forgot my Spanish, my English, my German, my everything. I, I, I was so afraid of speaking. And then I thought, okay, you know what? I'm going to start doing these tips that I'm sharing with you. So I'm going to practice on my own. I will talk to myself. I will make lists uh, like out loud for myself. And I started doing that. I was driving and I started saying the names of things. Or I was walking and I started saying the names of things in German. So then when my teacher asked me, I was like, I know the answer, me. You know, I felt a little bit more confident because I had already practiced on my own. So I think um, one of the things that really helps in building confidence is do it by yourself first. The other thing is do it with a friend or in class, for example, who cares if you make a mistake? Making mistakes is part of how we learn, right? And in a classroom, you're in a safe environment where if you make a mistake, it doesn't matter. Nobody's going to laugh. Nobody's going to judge you. It's just part of learning. And in the outside world, when we are trying to speak another language. So imagine that I started speaking a little bit of Bahasa with you right now. Would you make fun of me? Would you make me feel bad and say, ah, I know Miss Paola, you don't say it like that? <laughs> Probably not, right? Yes. So keeping that in mind as well, that people will feel grateful that you're trying to speak another language and they're going to want to hear you speak another language. So that also helps us to build our confidence as well. And uh, another, another thing that I tell my students and my teachers all the time is the, every opportunity you have to speak English with someone if it's a tourist, if it's a teacher, if it's a friend, if it's somebody from America, if it's somebody from another country that speaks English, take it, talk to them, share with them because people are going to feel very grateful that you're trying. Hey. And that takes us to the last one of the slide, which is making friends. <laughs> Choose a practice body, Choose somebody from your class or choose somebody from another class. Maybe if you are in 11th grade and have a friend in 10th grade, or if you're in 12th grade and have a friend in 11th grade, or maybe there are sections, section A and section B. Find a friend that wants to practice English with you. Talk to a tourist, make friends online. Um, like I was saying before, for example, make videos online. You can, TikTok right now, for example, is so in fad. You can make your own TikToks, 
and share them with your friends and practice your pronunciation, practice what you're saying, practice the structure, share your own thoughts. I'm sure all of you are amazing and have lots of things that you want to share. So thinking about things that you are passionate about, that you want to share with other people as well, will not only help you build confidence, but will also help you to make friends and talk to other people. So for example, now I love that you guys have questions because normally people feel intimidated and they're like, how do I ask this? Do I ask? Maybe I'm not going to ask. I'm going to let somebody else ask. And after, if three people don't ask, I will ask. And you start thinking about these things, right? But I love when people have questions because it makes me feel like, yes, other people want to speak the language as well, right? And I'm sure it happens with the people that are listening to you speak as well. And then we have a little bit more because I know you're going to ask me, how do I increase my vocabulary? So my first tip would be practice only English at school, in your English class, only English with Mr. Henry, only English with your English teacher. Use the phrases that you have practiced before the class to use them in the class. Use the, um, the stories or the pronunciation that you have practiced before in the class because you only have a very limited time to speak English. And outside the classroom, nobody speaks the language. They're speaking Bahasa, right? So every opportunity you get, speak and practice your English. And how do we increase vocabulary? Practicing, listening, reading, writing. So if you like to write, try to write down your thoughts in English. If you like to read, reading is the best thing you can do. Find something in reading that is interesting for you. So. I'm not going to ask you, for example, to read the news because oh, nobody wants to read the news in their own language. They don't want to read them in English. But if you like, for example, cooking, read something that has to do with cooking. If you like art, read something that has to do with art. And then you expand your vocabulary. You expand the structures that you use. And all of a sudden you are using words that you didn't know before. You might encounter some words and you don't know what they mean. You can go to the dictionary, find them in your phone very quickly, ask Google, what does this mean? How do you pronounce it? How do we use it? Experts say that to know a word, you need to know how it's spelled. You need to know how to pronounce it. You need to know when to use it. You need to know when not to use it and you need to be able to use it in a sentence. So I usually give this example uh, with my teachers, for example. There was a person that walks into a bar and the guy says, can I please have some Coke? And there's this huge guy that comes and punches him and throws him outside. And he's outside and he says, "But." I don't know what happened. I just wanted Coca-Cola. So when to use a word, when not to use a word, how to use it, what context to use it in is also important. When, I can, when can I say Coca-Cola? When can I say only Coke? When do I have to use the word soda? When do I have? That is also important as well. So how do we increase our vocabulary like that? By reading, by writing, by listening by consuming everything you can consume in English. Then again, I was talking about this a little bit earlier, which is learning phrases and not only words. So you can know 50 colors in English or you can know 25 fruits in English, but what do we use it for? Can you make a recipe? Can you know how to chop, cut, grate, for example? like the different things you can do with a vegetable. So that is more important than only knowing the vocabulary. So when you're learning phrases and not only words, you can, example, for example, make lists of things you can say, like how to greet a person. Hi, how are you? Hi, nice to meet you. Uh, I'm hope I hope you have a great day. 
you know, these kinds of phrases to not say the same thing all the time. So you can make a list, you can um, also name objects, right? That, or remind yourself what to do. So in the afternoon, when I get home, I need to fix my bed. My mother said that I have to do my homework. My father said that I have to not forget my prayers. My grandmother said that. So these lists that you make in your head, you can actually speak them in, in phrases in English. And that will also help you to exercise your brain. Then I think this one goes with some of the questions that you were asking me is exposing yourself to English. Use your phone in English, use apps in English, use websites in English. Uh, take any opportunity you can to speak and to listen to English. So if there's, for example, a festival about films in English, go. If there's a concert of somebody who sings in English, go. If there is, I don't know, any opportunity you can that you can find to be exposed to the language will help you as well. And this one we've talked a little bit about, and it's like finding a partner to practice with. So you can have a friend that you can watch TV with. You can have a friend that you can make short videos with. You can have a friend that maybe you want to make the videos or the audios on your own, but you want to share them with somebody who listens to them and gives you feedback. So we don't know. There might be someone famous here waiting to become a star. So we might have actors and actresses, or we might have singers, or we might have teachers, which is as important. <laughs> or we might have different careers in the making. So English will definitely help you in whatever career path you choose. So the more you practice, the more you find people uh, that you lose your fear of speaking with, the better you will become at speaking the language. And I have one more in which I have four more. Um, is that it? Louis, wait, sorry. Oh, there. One more um, slide with tips, and then we'll go into a round of questions again if you want. So, reading is key. The more you read, the more you understand. The more you read, the more vocabulary you acquire. The more you read, the more you learn about the structuring of a language. So I would recommend if you like reading and you like novels or you want to read something long, go ahead and do that. But if you don't like reading that much, find something short to read. Find a paragraph to read. Find a short story to read. But the more you read, the more you increase your vocabulary. Then another thing that I would suggest is talk to your phone. <laughs> You can talk to your phone about anything you want. You can record voice notes. You can make a list. You can set reminders. You can practice anything you want. And you can listen to your own pronunciation. So you can check. Some people tell me, how do I improve my pronunciation? Well, first, listen to native speakers. And after that, practice. Record yourself and listen to it. Uh, say a sentence and listen to it. Uh, record a voice note and listen to it to make sure that you are emulating the sound of the speaker that you want to sound like, if it's American or if it's a UK accent. Then again, with chats or videos, you can work on talking to others through technology. So thank God for technology. When I was growing up, we didn't even have smartphones. So if you wanted to talk to somebody, you had to go to their house. Now <laughs> we have video chat and video calls and we have WhatsApp calls through video, through audio. I would say again, find one person and say one time a week, we're going to have a call in English. One time a week, we're going to have a video call in English, right? So if people really, really care for you and they're really good friends, they are going to want to do this with you, right? because it's supporting each other to learn. And the last one is local opportunities. Film festivals, concerts, expositions, conferences, webinars, 
um, Zoom calls, Zoom conferences. There's so much out there that you can log into. Any opportunity that you might have to listen to other people speak English or to practice your English, enroll yourself in. I know sometimes it's difficult because you say, I know other people are going to speak better than me, or maybe people are not going to understand me. But you'll never know if you don't try. So if you enroll yourself, if you go to different opportunities, if you give yourself the opportunity to share with other people, then you might be surprised of how well you speak, or you might be surprised how much people understand you, or you might be surprised how much listen, how much people want to listen to you. Okay, so those were my 20 tips. Can we have another round of questions if we have any questions? Okay, since Miss Paula is done with her explanation about the remaining tips, uh, you may ask questions. And as, as always, you can open your camera and you can open your mic to ask questions to Miss Paula herself. You can also ask questions in the comment section. Okay, does anyone has any more questions? Um, hello. hello, my name is Nisha. I'm from Stanford, and I want to ask something. So, so many people said that one of the most effective ways to improve our English skill is to use it in daily life. But sometimes I'm not afraid to use English. Because some people will think if I want to break a button, so I chose to don't use English in my life. But if I only use English, effective for me. So what else what should I do to be more confident and not be afraid anymore? Thank you. Okay. So nowadays there's many there's many different apps that you can practice with. So I would say in order to be a little bit more confident to speak with other people, try speaking to yourself first. So at the beginning, I told you, try recording things by yourself, try pronouncing things by yourself, start making lists or saying things like, ah, refrigerator, hmm, living room, or, you know, like just remind yourself of vocabulary or phrases that you have learned in English. And then um, I would say, start practicing with the people that are closer to you. So if you have classmates that you can practice with, if you have teachers that you can practice with, if you have friends that you can practice with, and then later on, you it's gradual. So first you do it by yourself, then you do it with another person, then you do it with maybe a stranger, maybe you talk to a tourist, maybe you talk to an American person. So gradually you will become a little bit more confident in using your language. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you for your question and thank you for your answer, Ms. Paula. Does anyone has any more questions? Uh, I want to ask, I like to ask, uh, for example, at the exact moment, I face to face with a foreigner and the foreigner is asking a question that I can understand about the question, but I don't know how to reply the question. So how to, how to explain a something, uh, uh, how to explain a word that we don't know how to express. Thank hmm. you. Okay, so we actually, as teachers, we have to find different strategies to explain, for example, what you're saying. How do I make everybody understand what I'm trying to explain? So there are different strategies. You can use mimics. So, ah, the, the church, the, the church, the building with the cross in the top, you know, kind of. You can use um, body language. You can use a, maybe a picture, drawing something for the person and saying, is this what you're looking for? Maybe if the person is asking for directions, for example, 
um, we can try, for example, to write an alternative, like a synonym. That's why it's also important that when you're learning how to use a phrase or vocabulary, you learn synonyms as well. Because maybe the, the person doesn't know that word or you don't know that word, but you can explain it with a word that is similar or with a word that the other person might say like, ah, yes, I know what you're saying, right? So these are just a few strategies of things that you can do to make yourself understood. Okay, thank you for your question and thank you for your answers, Ms. Paula. Uh, is there any more questions you may ask? I have a question for Ms. Paula. Okay, so my question is, there are some people that they learn multiple languages, like English is their second or their third or their fourth language. So when they try to learn another language, um, some people tend to forget uh, the things that they learn they, that, that they learn on English. So do you have any solutions to prevent uh, um, for me like to forget the things that I learned from English when I learn another language? Yes. Thank you. Yes. So my suggestion would be never stop using the languages that you learned. So if you've learned two, three, four languages, find somebody that you can practice that language with. Because if you do not practice, you will forget it. Um, that actually happened to me. Remember I told you I learned German. I went to school for four years. I graduated. I was very fluent in German. And then I never practiced. So I remember a few phrases. I think if I were, if I were to go to Germany, I would survive but I'm not fluent anymore because I never had anybody to practice with. I never practiced my German with anybody. So I think my brain still knows a couple of words, but I'm not really sure how fluent I am, right? So if you're learning English and you're learning another language, make sure you practice English and, you're pra and you practice the other language as well. All right, thank you for your question and thank you for your answer. I think that is all for our Q&A session for today. Uh, Mr. Hendry, do you want to add something? Well, I think, uh, what about you, Paula? Is it enough for you? Or you want yes. to say more? I just wanna share, I just wanna share one more thing, um, which is a quote. Mm -hmm. This is the end of my of my presentation of today, and it and it says the limits of my language mean the limits of my world, and this is something that Ludwig Wittgenstein said, and I think it's very true. Sometimes we limit ourselves with our mind, for example. So the limit of our mind is the limit of our world. The limit of my language is the limit of my world as well. So lose, try to lose your fear of speaking. Nobody's going to care if you make a mistake, if you don't make a mistake, if you said it accurately or if you didn't say it accurately, as long as you are able to communicate and use the language, right? And accuracy, first we become a little bit fluent and then we become a little bit more accurate. We practice accuracy and fluency at the same time to make sure that we learn how to use it well, but don't, don't limit yourself. Don't limit yourself because the more you limit yourself, the less you will give yourself an opportunity to practice your English. So that's what I wanted to share. Thank you, Henry. So we must go beyond the limit, right? We must go beyond the limit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Paula, that's really a valuable tips from you. If I may conclude, all of those tips are so important for our students. Uh, but uh, I'd like to emphasize that English is a language that connects us to, to the world. Yeah? English connects us to the world because we can communicate with other peoples from other countries. Yeah? And nowadays, uh, there is a global English. So not only British and American English, but there are some other types of English. And uh, we can use our own accents as far as it is, um, it makes us comfortable to speak, yeah? to maintain yes. our fluency in speaking, right? So no worries about 
accents learned about types of English, we are free to choose, yeah, because there are American English, Irish, or even we can use our own style, Indonesian English, right? Okay, yeah, once again, uh, we are very grateful uh, for your tips, Paula, and I give the time back to the moderator. Okay, so thank you for your presentation and explanation, Ms. Paula. We are very grateful to have you here as our native speaker to speak in our talk show. And our talk show sadly has reached to an end. Okay, we would like to thank all the participants that joined this talk show today for interacting with us. And thank you, Ms. Paula, for your uh, time, for your knowledge that you gave us now. We're moving to our code section. Okay, so now we're gonna take pictures in our Zooms. So give your best smiles, all of you. All right, thank you everyone for joining. You can close your camera and mute your mic. And good morning, good morning and, and goodbye. goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Thank Have a nice thank day. You, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Miss Paula. Soon, soon. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.